competition. Now, all this has worked for South Africa until now, where we're going into an election next year, where the DA has a very big advantage because the apartheid system that had gone underground is stronger today than it was ever before, stronger than it was when it went to negotiate with the ANC. And now it actually is brave enough to feel that it's going to take over if the DA can get enough votes and then the EFF can also get enough votes together with all some other smaller parties. There is talk from the EFF, from the DA, that they can actually push out the ANC and begin to govern the system. And they'll replace the police heads, they'll replace the heads of the army, and they'll replace the system. And guess who's the biggest partner in that? The DA is the biggest. So they are going to actually have a sway. And once the DA are in, it's more or less like the apartheid system back again. And you've heard Herman Mashaba say clearly that if we come in, we're going to sanction Zimbabwe, we're going to sanction Zano PF heads. It's going to be a re-maintenance or a reinstitution of the former apartheid system. What that's going to do now is it's going to force SADC countries, which are already preparing now, to go to war if the DA comes into power. They are already preparing for the pre-apartheid system where they have is to Is this a real thing that we can read about somewhere? Or is well, this just conversations on the side? Let me tell you something controversial. Okay. But it has to be said. Recently, the Zimbabwean government received helicopters... Uh, medical helicopters from the Russians. Medical? Are you calling them medical? That's what they called. They called medical helicopters. Called medical I was, helicopters. I was there in St. Petersburg when Putin handed the keys to the chopper. To the one chopper, huge, right? Huge, black, beautiful... But that, that, that chopper came after... Oh, these are not 18, the medical helicopters. Yes. Oh, the medical okay. helicopters are something else. Not what I saw. Not what you saw. Oh, please continue. Right. So there are some people who are already speculating that those medical helicopters can be repurposed. It's oh, an this arms is why we war. ask if they are medical. Yeah. It's, there's an arms war already taking place, an arms race already taking place. Countries around South Africa have always allowed South Africa to have more weapons to maintain a balance in which South Africa under the ANC is going to be the master of the of the of the area. Zimbabwe was even denied. Um, generation five fighter jets so that South Africa can maintain its position. And they agreed to do that because they are hand in hand with the ANC. But now there is a chance that a DA government might control the army of South Africa, the air force of South Africa, and which will have dominance over Southern Africa and start to push Southern Africa to its will as we had before. And the Zimbabwe government had to arm itself to protect itself from that army. This is what is happening in the region. Please press a, put a semicolon there because we're jumping far ahead. <laughs> Kabila goes to Zimbabwe. Mugabe. Mugabe is head of SADC. Please come and assist me. Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi are here. I'm, I'm bringing this back to even to, today yeah. where we've got issues with the DRC. Yes. And the DRC is probably one of the most painful countries on the continent along with Sudan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and I just wanted you to add clarity for people that may not be aware. Very Why good. would you speak about the DRC and Zimbabwe and Rwanda? What is the link? Right. So there's still conflicts and Rwanda still feels they are owed. Whatever was agreed upon in the DRC and Zimbabwe today has to kind of decide whether they want to help Rwanda or not. No. So so right now, Rwanda, Rwanda so Zimbabwe deployed okay. with Namibia. They got there just before the uh, rebels of Rwanda uh, could remove Laurent Kabila. Now, uh, we call them we call Kagame, them rebels, but Kagame Kagame is always three people. Uh, and and uh, I was about to go there. So Sorry. Kagame always said they are rebels. Those are not my army officials. But James Kabarebe, who was one of the uh, 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 commanders and leaders of his military now, and he's just been made, I think, foreign minister, mm -hmm. was the one who was heading the rebel force to try and remove Kabila. And they clashed for the first time with the Zimbabwean army at an airport in, in, in Kigali, where they took one half of the airport, Zimbabwe took the other half of the airport. The Zimbabweans would fill the, airport, the, the, the planes here, load bombs there, and the airplanes would take off and go and bomb down at the end of the airport. And they would did this for a day or two until James Kabarembe's guys were 
actually defeated and they had to move out of uh, Kinshasa and then the war then went to the eastern part was of Congo. Kinshasa or Kigali? You said Kigali. Kinshasa. Kinshasa. That was a, the Kigali was a mistake. Uh, Kigali Th- was a mistake. This wasn't happening in Rwanda. This wasn't happening in Rwanda. It was, it was happening, happening in, the DRC, in the DRC. Where yes. they were fighting at the airport. Okay. 100%. Okay. So they were fighting at the airport in Kinshasa. Right? Mm. And the guy who was heading this rebel force yeah. was actually someone who was a head in the uh, Rwandan military. Not only were they doing that, they were trying to f- bomb what is called the Inga Dam to break to to to, to stop electricity supply to Congo. And there you were the so many things at once and you know <laughs> I I wish I could I don't want to stop you but people need to understand these things because most people don't, you know, the Paul Kagame is a polarizing figure for people that understand history. Because everyone's just like, he's amazing. And you're like, I don't know if you know history and how things have been done. The second thing is I want to emphasize that whenever...